surprised if you find our next contestant appearing at your window because that's the business of Craig Morland from Carln, our final competitor this evening. <laughs> I first realised that there was a market for window cleaning once I left the Air Force and went into direct sales with a national window company. Having asked a lot of questions of my customers, I uh, realised that there weren't very many window cleaners in the area and felt that there was a ready market for it. I worked out the viability of the, of the business by, first of all, cleaning windows on my own house and timing myself. Therefore, I was able to work out how many houses it was possible to do in a day and to work out the prices to make it fair and also profitable. As the bulk of the work that we do is domestic work for private houses, we fall foul of bad weather. And so we've diversified and we also supply fit blinds and awnings and also we supply an odd job service. I feel it's very important to present a smart and professional image to our customers as they need to feel that they can trust us about their property even when they're not at home. Because we have a large team, we're able to undertake large commercial jobs very quickly and efficiently. We're able to overcome almost any problem. Recently in Swindon, in order to get the job done properly on a five-storey building, we had to upsail over the edge. Certainly aiming for the dizzy heights. Well, you would think with all that fresh air, our window cleaner would be fit and healthy, are you? Sorry, I'm full of cold. He's got a cold. You're going to have to stuff your way through the questions too, Craig, starting with Roger. Roger. Craig, hello. Your RAF experience has given you a, a structured and disciplined, disciplined approach. Do you feel you can cope with future growth? I feel that by encouraging um, a genuine interest in the, in the lads that work for me, that um, the disciplinarian side needn't figure through. Um, I felt in the Air Force that there were too many chiefs and not enough in Indians, and uh, the um, ideas that myself and my contemporaries put forward were often squashed. I feel that um, by listening to the lads and what they have to say and what ideas they have for improvement is very important. It involves them in the business and it gives them a sense of pride which takes normally a long time to instill. Fine. Because of the growth of the business, you're having to register for VAT. Do you think that having to charge £3.45 instead of £3 a house will harm the business? I think if you um, were to ask me that question some time ago, I would have uh, gone into it in some great detail. It, it, out of all the things that I've had to overcome, that has probably been my biggest f problem. Uh, what I decided to do, rather than risk losing uh, many domestic customers because of adding 50 pence to the window cleaning charge, I decided to find ways of streamlining the business to make it more profitable and therefore, with the VAT allowable on various purchase goods, it, uh, it wouldn't affect my profitability and also keep the charges as they were. Great, thank you Roger, thank you. Moving on to Alan. Hello Craig, Hello, Alan. do you have any other plans? I'm very keen to push the business in other directions. I rather stumbled on, on the window cleaning and have turned it into a success. In the same way, I've uh, rather stumbled on um, odd jobs. We've been asked by numerous people to do all sorts from carpet fitting to building work and, and you name it. And I feel sure that if I market uh, that experience that it, it would also work out very profitable for me. What do you think the ideal target size is for your business? I feel there are no limits to it. It, it, it grows daily um, without us actually spending any money on advertising. It pushes itself bigger and bigger all the time. So I feel there are no limits. There we are, no limits. Alan, thank you. Clive. Hello, Craig. Hello. The, the idea that you have of the window man sounds a very neat package. Have you considered this as possibly a franchisable idea in the future? It's something that I did give a lot of thought to. Um, and it's something I'll give a lot of thought to at a future date. But for the time being, um, I like to have the control over my business and when the time comes that I, I feel that I've really succeeded, then I will talk to people about franchising and possibly go into that at a later date. How would you envisage expanding your customer base as it is at present? As it is at present, um, we're dealing with a very large number of domestic um, window cleaning contracts at the moment. We clean some one and a half thousand houses each month at present and it grows daily. Um, I'm now interested in approaching the commercial side of window cleaning because I have much more to offer now to the commercial customers than I did when I was just a one-man band. Greg, thank you judges. Thank you for your questions. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, our judges... I'm Swindon. Here, small community enterprises are thriving alongside the high-tech, high-profit firms like this specialist window cleaning company. They started out with one man in a bucket. The company's called Over the Top.
Today they employ 15 people but are looking to grow even more. Mary has come to meet the brains behind the business, Craig Morlam. But you started with ordinary houses, just that's right, yes. house windows. Started off on house windows. And now you're doing this. That's right, this is all we do these days. Oh, you don't do any houses at no, all? No, not at all, only tall buildings. Just train other people to do the houses. Well, that's, <laughs> that's right, yes. The company now plans to open a training school for window cleaners at its offices in Lynham. There's a bit more skill to cleaning windows than meets the eye. And uh, in all walks of life, all businesses, it's important to, um, to have proper, properly trained staff to, to do the work properly. And we'll be delivering training and assessment to um, the new national standard. All right, it's a brilliant idea. I mean, to me, all the big companies are gone, so the future is in smaller companies. Well, it is, really. Yeah. And to train people is, is just brilliant. What has Wiltshire Training Enterprise Council ever done for us? Well, lots. For instance... Investors in People has increased our staff confidence and helped our business to grow. Investors in People has really switched us on to staff development. Watch out for holes that trap busy feeds. I'm doing a modern apprenticeship and it's really good because I get paid while I learn. A modern apprenticeship offers me quality training with good job prospects. Directions training programme helped me to secure employment. I'm heading in the right direction. We support people with special training needs. I found a new job after the select training programme. We are assessors for national vocational qualifications within our industry. Skills for small business certainly showed us the way up. We encourage local environmentally friendly business. One in five of Wiltshire's population depend on the MOD for a living. Wiltshire Tech supports training and development in defence dependent areas. It is very important for us in education to work very closely with businesses. Yes, but what else has Wiltshire Tech done? Operated out-of-school clubs, stimulated economic growth, obtained European funding, encouraged learning. hazardous. Issues of health and safety are compromised as cleaners take to ladders or use anchorage equipment that does not comply with BS EM 795 regulations. Cleaners who choose to operate with these factors in play greatly increase the risk of injury to themselves or accidents happen with serious and sometimes tragic consequences. The point is this, accidents don't